time is the money of life. And the better you spend your time, the longer your life will be. And the better the quality will be. And how important it is that we set things out in front of us and not be satisfied with the same old, same old. There's nothing crazier than continuing to do the same thing and expecting different results. Let me give you a little, um, a little wisdom in an in a area tonight that uh, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, yeah. right? Whatever you do, get it. Yeah. Proverbs 4. I love, I, 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 you know, here's the thing. I think the only problem that you'll really ever have is a wisdom problem. Good. You don't really have marriage problems. You just have wisdom problems. <laughs> you don't have financial problems. You just have wisdom problems. A lot of times you don't have health problems. You just have wisdom problems. I'll tell you this. The more wisdom you have, the less miracles you'll need. A lot of times people are waiting for miracles when if you'd have had some wisdom. How many have ever made this statement? Man, if I knew back then what I know now. Have you ever made that statement? Now, listen, I believe in miracles. I'm not saying I don't believe in miracles. I believe, I wrote a, I wrote a book uh, uh, called Miracles, What to Do When You Need One, all about what, what you should do, what the Word says to do when you need a miracle. I believe in them. I've seen them. I've had them. My, my son's a miracle. He's 17 now. But uh, uh, when my wife was pregnant, we tried nine years. Uh, finally, my wife got pregnant. We've been married nine years. Finally, my wife got pregnant and uh, went in to the doctor, Dr. Colbert. We said, uh, you know, your baby, they went, the, doc, the baby's in your fallopian tube. Baby's in your foot. You have to remove the baby. You're not going to be able to have this baby. And uh, we've been praying for a long time. Well, a lot of people, they get a doctor's report and they immediately just believe it. But uh, I I just grew up in in church a long time. We used to sing this song, uh, Whose Report Will You Believe? And then we'd say, we believe the report of the Lord, right? So the doctor's report said that uh, the baby's in your fallopian tumor. We have to remove the baby. But the report of the Lord said that we were to be fruitful and multiply. And, uh, and, and so we said, God, we're just going to stand on that. And they said, well, uh, we need to schedule the surgery. So they, they scheduled the surgery. And we just kept believing. They, they scheduled We went in for the surgery. Um, and, and nothing had changed as far as we knew. They went in and that morning, right before the surgery, they did the ultrasound to make sure everything was, get every last thing, whatever they do there. And they said, hold on, wait a minute. Someone, someone's made a huge mistake. Your baby's not in your, your tube. He's in your womb, exactly where he's supposed to be. And, uh, what they called a mistake, we just called a miracle. And, uh, and she went on to carry him, you know, for uh, you know, nine months or whatever. He came out perfect. And, uh, well, he, he's not perfect, you know, but he's pretty close. He's, he's, he's a good kid, but he actually didn't even come out perfect. But uh, he's born C-section, so you can't tell when you look at him, though. He, he looks totally normal. The, the only way you can really tell he was born C-section is whenever he leaves the house, he goes through a window. But uh, other than that, he's totally normal. So anyway, so, so I believe, in, I believe in, in miracles. But like I said, the more wisdom you have, the less miracles you need. So if the only problem you'll ever have is a wisdom problem. How many would like to be doing better than you're doing right now in some area of your life? Okay. If you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, it just means there's something you don't know. When I heard that, I went from being a know-it-all to being a learn-it-all. If the difference between where I was and where I wanted to be was what I know, I'm going to learn something today. Because if you want tomorrow to be different than today, you've got to learn something today in order to make tomorrow different. If you go into tomorrow with the same information you have today, you won't really have a tomorrow. You'll just have a longer today. 
So I try to learn something every day, right? Sometimes it's little things, you know, not life-changing things. I learn, uh, normally we have books. I don't have any books. All right, don't worry, I'm bringing books next time. I'm already in trouble for that. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, but uh, I like to go back and sign books and meet people, you know, and I'm always learning new ways to spell names, you know. Cheryl, is that Cheryl with a C or Cheryl with an S, right? Sean, there's like three ways to spell Sean. Amy, there's like five ways to spell Amy. They're just, so I'm learning, <laughs> it's a new girl at Starbucks, at my Starbucks that I go to that day, and I walked in, she had a little badge on, trainee. And I was like, that's funny, <laughs> your mom named you trainee. <laughs> And uh, she looked at me, she said, it's Trené. <laughs> I learned something new. See, there's always something to learn. So whatever you do, whatever you do, the Bible says, get wisdom. Proverbs 1 verse 5 said, a wise person will increase in learning. So the Bible says, if you're smart, you'll get smarter. If you're smart, you'll keep learning. You'll keep growing. Proverbs uh, 3 tells us how valuable is more, more valuable than silver, more profitable than gold, more precious than rubies. If you want tomorrow to be different than today. Proverbs 4, whatever you do, get wisdom. Wisdom will promote you. Wisdom will protect you. All throughout Proverbs, it tells us the value of wisdom. We got a guy in our church who his company makes all of the uh, airbags and seat belts for the Ford F-150s. So if you drive a Ford F-150, he made your, your his company made your seatbelt or your um, airbags. And uh, talk about, so I know some of y'all are, are part of the kingdom business. Um, th- this guy is a, is a kingdom business guy. And uh, when COVID hit, he just got a huge shipment in for the airbags, right? And then COVID hit, they shut down production. And so he's got all this material there. He's like, what can we do with this? He's praying. And uh, he, he's a tither, a giver. He's a, he's a generous guy. And all of a sudden he's like, I'm just like, God, you know, I tithe, I give. So I'm expecting, uh, I'm expecting you to take care of me. Like you promised that you would, you rebuke the devourer. And, and, uh, and so uh, God gave him this idea. He called in his engineers. They checked, they found out that the same material that make the airbags, they could make hospital gowns out of. And this was right when COVID hit and everyone needed more gowns and more hospitals. To, anyway, they, uh, in 2020, um, they made an extra 50 million that year on hospital. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hallelujah. But, um, but anyway, he was telling me about, seat, about airbags. I, I didn't know when an airbag deploys, it costs about $500 to put an airbag back. I didn't know that. Like I said, Sometimes you learn stuff. It's not life-changing, but yeah. it's good to know. Yeah. You know, because he was telling me the passenger side, if no one's with you, you still pay 500 bucks if the airbag deploys. So, you know, some cars, you can turn the airbag off, yeah. right? Yeah. So if no one's with you, you can turn it off. Or you got to start thinking about who is with you. Because <laughs> it's 500 bucks, you know, you got to... I called home, told my wife, said, honey, I had a little accident. Don't worry, I'm fine. My airbag deployed. I'm sorry about your mom. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's a bad mother-in-law joke. Sorry. I love my mother-in-law. In case she's watching. A couple of Christmases ago, I got her a cemetery plot for Christmas. Anyway, I, didn't, I didn't get her anything last year. She was mad at me. You didn't give me anything for Christmas this year. I'm like, you didn't even use what I got? Remember, um, remember when, when God came to Solomon and said, Solomon, anything you want, you can have it, right? Anything you want. Behind door number one, started giving them like, let's make a deal. Like behind door number one, wealth and riches. Behind door number two, the life of your foes. Behind door number three, uh, honor. You know, and, and, and Solomon said, God, just give me what? God, just give me wisdom. Just give me wisdom. That's why you go to my house, I got 4,000 books. Why? There's too much stuff I don't know. I hate not knowing stuff. If the difference between where you are and where you want to be is what you know, I can't go to Barnes and Noble without spending two or 300 bucks. Yeah. It's too much stuff I don't know. Yeah. 
And so whatever you do, whatever you do, get wisdom. And all these principles, all these principles are in there. The Bible's full of, of, of principles. They're, they're principles are simple. There's a big difference between the person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. The person of Jesus prepares you for heaven. The principles of Jesus prepare you for earth. There are ungodly people who will use godly principles to achieve ungodly results. While the church, we don't know the principles or ignore the principles. So about 50% of what I do is in the corporate arena. And I've been on, on tour for the last several years in the largest uh, business seminars in America with the guys from Shark Tank, if you've ever seen that show, Shark Tank, um, uh, Tony Robbins, some of those guys. And so one day I was sitting talking to one of the guys from Shark Tank, a guy by the name of Damon John. Um, he started a company years ago called FUBU. And so he was sharing in his, his story on stage of how he wrote down all of his goals, right? And he said, uh, and, and Terry talked about that a little bit last night, writing down your goals. And when you write down your goals, you dramatically increase the likelihood of accomplishing them if you just write them down. And I told Damon, I said, that's good. I said, that's in the Bible. He said, that's not in the Bible. I said, it's in the Bible. Everything you ever, the Bible's the greatest success book ever written. God's the one that gave us all these principles. He said, where's it in the Bible? So I showed him, what's the scripture you got up here? How back at chapter two, write the vision, make it plain, right? So you can run with it. All this stuff's in the Bible. I mean, it's amazing the principles that we operate. How many of you have ever straightened up the shoes in your closet? And when you got done, you felt like you could conquer the world. <laughs> Anybody know that feeling I'm talking about? You're like, what else could I do today? All you did was straighten up the shoes in your closet. But you feel so good. Why? Because you created order. God is a God of order. Order is the accurate arrangement of things. So when you straighten up the shoes in your closet, you actually did something very godly. And that's why you felt so good about it. See, all these principles are there, yet if we don't recognize them, and, and so principles, they, they just, they, they work. It's, it's just, uh, it's like the word. The word works if you work the word, right? The principles work if you'll work them. No matter where you are, they work the same in Hobbs as they do in uh, 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 Detroit, and they work the same in Detroit. I was last week, I was in South Africa. I told them, I said, they work the same here yeah. in, in, in the Southern hemispheres. They do in the Northern hemisphere. They, they work, they, they, they're principles. And life is just the process of discovering principles, right? Of discovering what works. If, if you want to make rapid progress, you want to see God speed up things in your life, increase things in your life. Um, uh, don't fight against principles. Don't fight against, flow with the principles. Principles are without question the fastest way to get you what you want and to get you where you want to be. So God puts these desires and these goals and so we got to discover uh, the principles. Um, just say this with me. Say, I discover the principles that work. I discover the principles that work. And I'm going to work them. I'm, I'm forever learning. New principles that work to better my life, to better my church, to better my world. As principles are revealed to me, I cheerfully record them. I'll use them and I'll share them with others. Yeah, I'll tell you what, God. So, so I, I'm just going to share some of them, uh, a couple of them with you tonight. So, uh, you're not a victim, right? You're a victor. We're victorious. And so I'm going to share these secrets, victorious secrets <laughs> with you guys tonight. And I think will help you uh, a, a little bit. I know some of y'all took advantage of, uh, of uh, uh, Terry's um, uh, system last night. And I, I tell you what, it's one of the best investments you can make is the investment you make in yourself. And I, I love when I came in, Pastor, the, the filling station, yeah. right? Uh, th that's the bookstore. Yeah. yeah. Some of y'all just thought there was some like little gadget stuff in there. No, no, no. It's the bookstore where you buy books to make you smarter. Yeah. Some of y'all haven't been in there. You went to the cafe. <laughs> I can tell. I should have went to the bookstore. I need to go to the bookstore myself. I was doing really, I was trying to lose weight. I was doing so good. Then I saw this t-shirt the other day, said fat people are harder to kidnap. 
I'm like, I gotta protect myself. <laughs> Gary, they'll, get, they'll just grab him, he'll be gone. I'm, I'm safe. All right. I don't know what those numbers up there mean. I just see that the, the, they're not doing anything, so I guess I'm, I'm good. I'm having so much fun up here. I don't know if y'all are having as much fun as I am. But um, uh, I was at a meeting one time. Anybody ever heard of Peter J. Daniels? Peter J. Daniels, one of the wealthiest men in Australia. Very successful businessman. I went to a, a seminar that he did, and it cost me about $3,000 to go to the seminar. But he's doing better than I'm doing, so obviously he knows something I don't know, yeah. right? Remember I said earlier, if you're not doing as well as you'd like to be doing, yeah. it just means there's something you don't know. And so I went to a seminar. He's teaching. I'm, I'm writing as fast as I can. I'm like, oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. At the end, he goes, I've got some books and CDs. Make yourself available. Told us about them. And so as soon as the thing was over, I grabbed my friend. I said, let's go. I want to get that stuff. So I ran back. There. I said, give me everything. They said, you want everything? I said, everything. He knows something I don't know. I'm going to find out what it is. So they added it up. They said, if you buy everything on the table, it's $1,600 for everything. And um, I didn't know he knew that much stuff. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be. I wasn't expecting it to be that much. And my, my friend said, that's crazy. He said, are you going to get it? I said, I don't know. I think I'm going to get it. He said, you think it's worth it? <laughs> I said, you know what? I think I'm worth it. Yeah. it it's, see, a lot of times, you gonna buy that book, you think it's worth it? I don't know, do you think you're worth, if you don't think you're worth 20 bucks, why would anybody else think you're worth 20 bucks? Right? I mean, we already know, we already know that wisdom is worth it. It's, I mean, think about buying a book. What took someone their entire lifetime to learn? You can learn in a few hours for 20 bucks. You'd be crazy not to buy books, so right? Yeah. And, and, and so, so I said, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I, I, I'm worth it, right? right? So I, I got it all. Um, and I got, a, I got a lot of good stuff out of it. I got this one really good idea. The billionaire, Ross Perot, Texas billionaire, uh, he, he said, all it takes is one good idea to live like a king the rest of your life. Yeah. Just one I, I didn't get a king idea, but I got a pretty good idea. I got all, I listened to all that stuff and, and I got one idea. I put the idea together. I ended up selling the idea. And within about, within about eight months, the idea produced me a little over $300,000, right? Yeah. So Say praise the Lord. Praise They'll seem a little jealous of my blessings. <laughs> I'm sure you'd be happier if it was your idea. How many be happy if you had a three hundred thousand dollar idea? That's what I thought. How many be happy if you just had like a fifty thousand dollar idea? How many just hope you have an idea before? My God, I hope I think of something. You'll always invest in what you find valuable. And so I encourage you to find, there's all kind of books in there. I know some of you, like I said, invested last night. I brought a, a, a little card with us uh, that has several things. Um, we usually sell them, they come in these big boxes. And uh, if we sell them in the big boxes, they'll have a book and workbook and, and videos and all that kind of stuff. And, and, uh, and they sell for, if you go to the website, these big boxes will sell for 900 bucks or 400 bucks or whatever. And so we put them all together uh, because, you know, if we go to a corporate arena, a corporate setting, you know, you'll sell for several thousand dollars and at church you know they're not going to pay that much <laughs> no no we have the bible that tells us how valuable it is but we don't believe it <laughs> so we have to make it a, a good deal so favor we'll just call it favor so anyway uh anyway let me just mention this real quick i brought one one little card uh, it's called Success Made Simple. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a coach. That's what I love to do. I love to help people get from where they are to where they want to be. Um, and, and you can have dreams and ideas and goals and your vision board, but you got to know how to get from where you are to where you want to be. And to do that, you got to have a plan. And so that's what I do. I help people develop a plan. How many love for me to come home with you uh, for the next 30 days? And uh, we'll write up your plan. We'll just sit down for 30 days. We'll come up with a plan. Okay. Um, I eat a lot, y'all sure, <laughs> but uh, 
I, I, and I'm like, I can't go home with everybody, so how can I do this? How can I do this? So I, I wrote a book, um, and, and, I, and I developed a, a thing called The Game Plan. Uh, you see, they showed you all the different books. So on this, you, you'll get all these, uh, all these different books. Uh, the one on the far right, Another Shot. How many have ever made a mistake? Oh, wow, most of you. Yeah, if you've never made a mistake, you probably never made anything. Everybody makes, everybody makes mistakes. Now, that book, um, I, was, I was sitting in the lobby of the Island Hotel in Newport, California. We've had the opportunity to work with a lot of athletes, pro athletes. And, and I was sitting with a guy by the name of Kobe Bryant, who's passed away now. But Kobe had just set the record for the most missed shots in the history of the NBA. The most missed shots. Now, seven days after he set the record for the most missed shots, he passed up a guy by the name of Michael Jordan for the most points scored during his career. So the same guy with the most missed shots passes up one of the greatest players of all time for the most points scored. And I said, Kobe, how did you do it? He said, that's real easy. I just took another shot. <laughs> that's where I got the name. That's where I got the name for the, the, the book, Another Shot. Well, I, just take another shot. You cannot let the fear of failure or the fear of criticism keep you from trying again, right? You just take another shot. There's a great quote uh, on the back of the book by Evander Holyfield, the, the boxer. And I'm mentioning that because I'm not trying to drop names. I'm trying to, I just, I just want to tell you what the five-time heavyweight champion of the world said about my book. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you that because he's a boxer and the, it makes sense. The quote makes sense when you, I'm not, listen, if anything I've learned from spending time with Oprah, it's that, it's that you shouldn't drop names. Okay. But no, Evander Holyfield, Evander Holyfield said, it's not getting knocked down. That makes you, you lose, makes you lose the fight. It's not getting back up. Right, we all get knocked down sometimes, but you gotta get back up. And so, so we took that book and, I, and I, I put together a plan, a 30 day plan. And so if, when you get that, every morning you'll register it. And every morning when you wake up in the morning, I'm gonna be there at your house. And we're gonna go through the plan. So you print out a workbook and, uh, and that one is, is different than all the other. There, there's six, um, what did I do with that thing? Oh, here it is. There's six different coaching programs on here. So it's about six months worth of, uh, of stuff on here. But uh, you'll get that book, another shot. You'll get the audio book of, since I'm gonna be at your house anyway, I might as well read it to you. <laughs> well, bedtime stories with Dr. Dave. So uh, you'll also get that. You'll get the videos. And, uh, and on that one, I have some friends that join me uh, along the way to coach you. So like every day, different people, like a friend of mine ran Disney World uh, for 13 years. His name's Lee Cockrell. Uh, he ran all, all the parks, everything. So he's made a lot of decisions. So the one day we talk about decision making. So if you tried to hire Lee, well, you, you couldn't. It would just cost you tens of thousands of dollars. So Lee's a friend of mine. So I said, Lee, why don't you come on one day and talk to us about decision making? So him and I will talk to you and he'll be your coach that day. Uh, one day we talk about vision boards. And so um, Terry, uh, who was here last night, is, is my guest coach on one day. Um, uh, Pat Williams, who uh, uh, is the senior vice president of the Orlando Magic and began the Orlando Magic, been a, in basketball for years. So I got just different coaches, different people all along the way. Uh, the first day we talk about attitude and I'm like, who do I know that has a really good attitude that I could get on here? And, uh, and I got a friend over in, in Houston, he's got a small church. I'm like, I think I can help you get your name out because you always have a good attitude. And so I asked Joel Osteen if he wanted to be in here. <laughs> So he's like, thank you, Dave. I'm, this is exciting. <laughs> and so, um, so the very first thing, anyway, Joel's on there. So that, that, that one's, that one's on there. Uh, the force of favor. How many like to have more favor? Yeah. One moment of God's favor changes everything. Whatever, whatever you recognize, you become thankful for whatever you're thankful for increases in your life. So as you learn to recognize the little things God does, you'll begin to see it increase into the bigger things. So Luke 2.52, Jesus increased in wisdom. 
Jesus got smarter. I think we should get smarter. And he increased in favor. So I started looking for ways to increase my favor. So in that book, The Force of Favor, I give you seven ways to increase your favor. So in there, on, on here, you'll get the book, you'll get the audio book, you'll get uh, a workbook, and you'll get eight videos. So there's six books on here, six audio books, six workbooks, and about 52 videos. Um, all on this, this thing, uh, mindset matters, which we're going to talk about really quick tonight. Uh, and, uh, uh, 12 traits of the greats. I took thousands of hours and I studied the great achievers, the, the great, whether it's great on the baseball field, the battlefield, the business field, what made them great. And I took those 12 traits, put them together into a 12 week, uh, program talking about the 12 different traits, like things like, um, well, the first one in there is responsibility. Yeah, I made that one the first one because most people don't want to take responsibility. <laughs> so the other, the other 11 aren't going to matter if you blame everybody else for all your problems. <laughs> it's the government's fault. It's my wife's fault. Yeah. It's my kid's fault. It's my boss's fault. We always blame other people. It's always someone else's fault. Yeah. The doctor said, Dave, you need to lose 30 pounds. I'm like, that's Krispy Kreme's fault. <laughs> beginning of the year, January, he's like, Dave, you need to lose 30 pounds this year. And here we are, April, right? And I've got like 35 to go. <laughs> it's always, it's easier to blame other people. Anyway, um, so we go through that. Uh, we talk about courage. Um, that's one of the traits of great achievers. They have courage. We call it faith, right? Uh, to take a risk, to step out, to do something. I love courageous people. Yeah, you got to have courage to do something great. Anyway, uh, then there's the, the book on miracles, what to do, you need one. And then how many of ever had a bad habit you wanted to break? I wrote a book called Make That Break That. Best way to get rid of a bad habit is to create a new and better habit. Uh, even the Bible tells us that. How do you overcome evil? Good. It's good. How do you overcome bad habits with good habits? Yeah. Better habits. How do you overcome the, the bad habit of fear or worry? Yeah. You create a good habit of faith, yeah. living by faith. So uh, anyway, all that's in there. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of, on this little card, uh, when, you, when you get it, you'll scan the QR code and then you'll start downloading them all and they'll just come to you. Um, all six books and six, it's just hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of of materials, just all the books by themselves. Well, they're like yeah. 20 bucks, that's 120 bucks. And then the workbooks. And anyway, you can get the whole thing for 100, I think it's $197. You can get everything. So like 200 bucks. Um, say thank you. Hey. That's a really good deal. You should at least be grateful. <laughs> that's, I'm going to teach gratitude for just a moment here. <laughs> It's just, you know, it's just how you see yourself. Do you think you're worth it? Yeah, so good. Three ways to see yourself. In the book of Numbers here, let me show you a story of some people who, well, it was all in how you see yourself. Three ways you can see yourself. You can see yourself the way other people see you, which may be good, may not be good. I, I learned a long time ago, what other people think about you is none of your business. Quit going through your whole life worrying about what everyone else thinks about you all the time. I think it was Eleanor Roosevelt that said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So quit worrying about what everyone else thinks about you all the time. Uh, the second way to see yourself is how you see yourself. It's called confidence, right? We all want to have good confidence, good self-confidence, but things happen, right? People say things to us, do things to us that affect our self-esteem. So you can't even base your whole life on how you see yourself because... I mean, how many have ever had someone say something or do something that, that hurt your feelings or could have affected your self-esteem? Yeah, most all of us. One, one time in high school, a girl broke up with me. She said, I'm breaking up with you. You got low self-esteem. I was like, great, that helped. <laughs> another, another time in high school, this girl called me. She said, hey, come over to my house. Nobody's home. I went over there. No, there's nobody home. I just kept knocking, nothing. That, that hurts. That, that's. The third way to see yourself, third way to see yourself is to see yourself the way God sees you. Now, if you could get a picture of yourself the way God sees you, not just the confidence, but a confidence. Yeah. 
right? Not just knowing who you are, but knowing whose you are. You walk different, you think different, you talk different. So, so here you got a bunch of guys in, in numbers and, uh, and, and, and it, it really all has to do with our mindset. That's why one of the books on here is, is worth the whole thing. Mindset matters. Cause if you can change your thinking, you can change your world. Yeah. Bible talks about mindset probably more than just about anything else. Talks about renewing our mind as a person thinketh. I think what you think about may be even more important than what you pray. So good. So good. When I pray for something, right? The was Ephesians 3:20, yeah. whatever you ask or think. Yeah. Right? I can pray for 10 minutes. God heal my marriage. God restore my marriage. God change my home. I could pray that for 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 10. I could pray that for an hour. But if the other 23 hours of the day, all I think about is, it's never going to change. My spouse is always going to be like this. It's always going to. See, what you think about is so important. As a person thinketh, so are they. How you see things. It's like you and I, we can see the same person, see him completely different, right? You ever notice that? Like one person's like, oh, he's great. The other person's like, that guy's a jerk. Right? Girl brings her boyfriend home to meet her parents. She's so excited. She, he comes in, got tattoos, piercings all over. The mom says, ooh, honey, come here. He does not look like a very nice young man. That's how the mom sees it. Daughter sees it completely different. She goes, he's a great young man. My goodness, he's given 200 hours of community service right now. <laughs> It's all in how you see it, right? So I told that joke, this big guy came over, he goes, you, you against tattoos? <laughs> and I'm, I ride a Harley, so I'm, no, I, I, I got those fake sleeves. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not against, he goes, yeah, I don't have any tattoos personally. I mean, you, would, you wouldn't put a bumper sticker on a Ferrari, right? <laughs> um, but anyway. So let me, let me show you this. Let me show you this story real quick. Numbers. Um, Moses is the leader of the Israelites and they, they, they've left Egypt. They're headed over to Canaan. Uh, a lot of people talk about Canaan being a type of heaven. I, I, I don't really think it, it's a type of heaven because there was giants there and in heaven there, there, it, there's no conflict, right? So there can't be giants in heaven. So, so let's look at Egypt real quick as failure and Canaan is success, right? Canaan is a symbol of your dreams, your goals, where you're, you're headed for this appointed times. Pastor in that video is to declare, where, where are you going, right? Uh, you can't leave where you had to you decide where you'd rather be. And, uh, and so Canaan is uh, our goals, places of victory. And every person has goals. God intended for you to, to have them. He, he's the one that puts these desires. Now here's the thing. You will never leave Egypt until you can see yourself in Canaan. You got to see yourself in a better place than where you're at right now. Like I said, three ways you can see yourself. You can see your dream. Everybody had a, a, a dream. But Numbers 13 here, the, the Lord said to Moses in verse 1, send, send men to explore and scout out the land of Canaan. So they, they got 12 spies, right? 12 spies, one from every tribe, 12 tribes. Give me one from every tribe. They're going to go over to Canaan, see what it's like. Come back and tell us, are the people big or are they small? Are there, are there cities? Or are they camps? Uh, what, what, just find out what everything's like. And you, and you can read through that whole thing. I encourage you to read Numbers chapter 13. Read the, read the whole thing later. And uh, it says that they, they found some of the fruit from the land, cut up, cut up uh, uh, the, some grapes, just cut a, a branch, one cluster of grapes. It took, talk about some big grapes. I can't even imagine because it took two guys to carry back one cluster. That's some big grapes. And they told Moses, the land flows with milk and honey, but the people who dwell there are strong, right? They, they have cities are fortified. They're, they're, they're the sons of Anak, uh, Anak, which are great in stature and courage. And then, then you get down to verse 30 and Caleb. So there was 12 spies. And uh, two of them, we, we remember, we, a lot of times we call them the faith spies, right? Their names was, were, were what? Anybody remember those two good spies? Joshua and Caleb, right, yeah. Um, and then the 10 other spies that came back with an evil report. Anybody, can anybody name one of those 10? 
Yeah, nobody remembers losers. Um, so Caleb, Caleb gets back and he, he says, look, let us go at once and possess the land. We are well able to conquer it. But then the other one said, no, we can't, we can't do it. We're too big. They're stronger than us. And so they brought an evil report and they're, they're, they'll devour us. And, and then it goes on to say that, that they, they look like um, they're, they're from the giants. And it, like it says, and we were in our own sight. How do you see yourself? They like said, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were, even they think we look like grasshoppers. They don't know that. And some people go around this low self-esteem, not knowing who they are in Christ, not having any god -pedence. We look like grasshoppers. We'll never be able to do it. You don't know where we're from. You don't know what my family's been through. You don't know what, and even in our own sight. So this account, the 12 spies, they go out, 10 had evil reports, says two had good reports. Now, ignoring the giants was not what made the reports good or evil. Right? All 12 of them saw the giants. Right. All 12 of them recognized the existence of the giants, even Joshua and Caleb. Faith living is not ignoring the obvious. That's right. right? Some people think, well, if I ignore the problem, it'll just go away. If I ignore the situation, if I, if I don't, then I'm admitting doubt. And that's just, I mean, even in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus didn't act like Satan didn't exist. I don't see the devil. Nope. Don't see him. Right? I don't have a cold. I don't. No, I'm. I'm believing for my healing. I'm. I'm overcoming. And uh, but uh, <coughs> I have a cough. Right? I'm not going to ignore it. Yeah. Not, but you know, just like ignoring cancer is not going to make it go away. Right. Ignoring financial problems aren't going to make them go away. Right. Ignoring your mother-in-law is not going. <laughs> you've got to admit. You've got to admit something exists before you can confront it successfully, right? So all 12 spies had faith. All 12 spies, just two of them had faith in God. 10 of them had faith in the giants. Are you putting your faith in your problems or are you putting your faith in God, right? So faith, I love faith. I love people that are full of faith. I love that this church is full of faith. I can feel it. I mean, you want someone praying for you. You want someone with some faith, right? I mean, I don't want someone praying for, I will see, I don't know if God will do it. Well, <laughs> no, I got, a, I got a friend. You want someone to pray for you? He's the one. Like, yeah. I remember someone came up to us and said, can you pray for my hearing? Man, he grabbed his ears. He prayed powerful prayer over his ears. He goes, okay, how's your hearing now? Like, I love those people that yeah. expect it right then. It should be, yeah. right? How's your hearing now? The guy said, actually, my, my hearing's not till next Thursday. <laughs> right, but... So when, when you when you look at these when you look at these twelve spies, when you look at these, the, your conversations reveal whether you're a winner or a loser. You listen to how they were talking. We look like grasshoppers. Two of them were licking their lips like we're grape tasters. You seen the you seen the size of those grapes? You know, you can major on your problems or you can look at your possibilities. Yeah. You can look at the obstacles or you can talk about the opportunities. You can talk about disease or you can talk about health. You can talk about what the devil's doing or you can talk about what God's doing. You can talk like a victim or you can talk like a victor. And I know your pastors teach you about the power of your words. Life and death are in the power of the... Yeah, you're going to eat the fruit of what you say. Well, I'll never be able to, well, you're going to eat the fruit of what you say. Words are, how many have ever, how many have ever said something that hurt somebody? Yeah. How many has someone ever said something that hurt you? Okay. Every one of us have felt the power of words, right? We know that there's power in words. I heard about a couple have been married for 25 years celebrating 25 years together. They, they decided to go on their, their anniversary to the same place they'd went on their honeymoon got the same room, same hotel, and it just celebrate 25 years together. They were still together. Had some ups and downs, but they were still together. That night, they got back to the room, and the husband kind of laid his head back in his wife's lap, and she was running her fingers through his hair, you know, what, what he had left. 
25 years, you know, and he had his glasses on and she took his glasses off. She looked at him. She said, you know, honey, without your glasses on, you look like the man I married 25 years ago. He looked back at her and he said, you know, honey, without my glasses on, All right, some of y'all get that later, but um, <laughs> you are not a grasshopper, okay? You quit, quit talking like a grasshopper, quit acting like a grasshopper. It's time to start licking your lips. And you're a grape taster. Here's some advice for some of you. Some of y'all should use a glue stick instead of chapstick. <laughs> how, how many would admit you have a hard time being positive? Be honest. Look, yeah. What a, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, listen, I have, to, I have to work at it all the time. People say, you're so positive. Aren't you like a motivational speaker? <laughs> well, uh, they pay me a lot of money for that. <laughs> I have to work at it. I, I, I was born a pessimist. Uh, even my blood type is B negative. <laughs> yeah. And a, a, a lot of people, a lot of people, right? They just, they sit around and they cry over all that they've lost in their life and all and, and, and get your mind off of what you don't have and get your mind on what you do have right get your mind off of what you lack and get your mind on what you already possess God has a plan for you you are not a failure you are not a grasshopper and the next time you feel like I could never do anything great I'd never be able to, you don't understand all the mistakes I've made. You don't understand well, all the excuses. I mean, just start looking and, and, and you think God can't use you. I, I made a list of a bunch of our heroes in the Bible who God used. How could God use me? I did this mistake. I made this mistake. Well, Noah was a drunk. God used him. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Moses was a stutter. Joseph was abused. Gideon was afraid. Rahab was a prostitute. Samson had long hair. God still used him. David had an affair. Elijah was suicidal. Jonah ran from God. Leah was ugly. I'm not judging her. It's, it's in the Bible. <laughs> Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. Peter denied Christ. Think about that. You're with Jesus. I don't know him. <laughs> Three times. Who? Jesus. <laughs> you ever wonder though why he would do that? Like you're with G. Like why would? Yeah. I don't know. I did notice this in the Bible. I don't know if this is why. But just a few verses before this whole thing with Peter denying Christ, you see that it's, it's where Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. I don't know if there's a correlation or not. Just an observation, okay? Anyway, the I mean, the list goes, goes on. The disciples fell asleep while they were praying with Jesus. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. The Samaritan woman was divorced more than once. God still used her more than I was. I got here to the, my hotel and I got on the elevator. This lady looked at me. She goes, you look like my third husband. <laughs> I thought of that Samaritan woman. I was like, like welcome to Hobbs. You know, 
I was like, how many times have you been married? <laughs> and she said, twice. I mean, the, the, the list just Timothy had an ulcer. How about this? Lazarus was dead. And God still used him. So, what, is, uh, what does 1 Samuel 16 say? The Lord doesn't see things the way that you see them. People judge the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the, the difference maker in all those people I mentioned was God had a plan for their life. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for your life and it's for good. Yeah, that's what Jeremiah is for good to give you a hope to, pro to prosper you, to give you a hope and a, a future. So quit magnifying your problems. Start magnifying God. Watch the difference. God's not, God's not looking at where you stumbled yesterday. He's looking at the possibilities of your tomorrow. Stop talking like a, a complainer and start talking like a conqueror. All right, you can, you can talk about your lack of finances or, or you can talk about your expectation of God's provision. A little while ago, you sowed a seed of obedience. And so you can expect provision from that seed. So it, 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 it's, it's not knowing how God will take care of you. It's knowing that God will take care of you. And I'm not saying it's always going to be easy. I'm not saying it, but, but if, we, if we're going to enjoy life, we're going to have to transfer that negative grasshopper mentality over into a positive grape taster mentality, right? You can choose to believe the good news or the bad news, right? And, uh, and you know, you hear all those, you heard those jokes, yeah, I got good news and I got bad news, right? You got a choice, believe the good news or the bad news. I heard a guy got a call from his doctor, said, I got good news and bad news. He said, well, which one do you want first? He said, give me the good news. He said, the good news is you got 24 hours to live. He said, what's the bad news? He said, the bad news is I tried to call you yesterday. <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> I'm out of time. I got I to I gotta pray for you guys. Did this help you guys at all tonight? This help you at all? Let me just pray for you real quick. Bow your heads real quick. Two things I want, I want to pray. And, and don't, don't forget, it's not like I said, not for everybody. I didn't bring enough of these for everybody. But if you're like me, you want to learn and grow, you're into to wisdom, the value of wisdom, I encourage you on the way out, wherever those uh, cards are, grab one. I think they'll be a, a help to you. Um, I said at the very beginning, life goes better when you put God first. And maybe you're here tonight, and, and uh, I never like to close out giving people an opportunity to put God first in their life. I think it's the best decision you'll ever make. And when you put God first, he'll take you places that you never dreamed of. Maybe you're here in the room tonight. Maybe you're watching online tonight, and you've never made a decision to put God first in your life. Maybe you say, Dave, at one point God was first, but if I'm real honest right now, well, my priorities are not where, he's not where he needs to be. He's not in the driver's seat. Maybe he's in the passenger seat. Maybe he's a companion. Maybe he's in the, the back seat. He's a, a passenger in your car, but he's not driving. And you say, Dave, I'm ready to put God first place, number one in my life. Maybe you've allowed a job. Maybe you've allowed a relationship or something to come before God today. You say, I'm ready to put God back where he belongs, first place in my life. You know if that's you. Number one, you've never made the decision to put God first. You want to do that tonight. Number two, you say, Dave, right now he's not where he needs to be in my life. I know that. And I want to live my best life. I want to live the life God called me to live. And I want to know that he has a plan. And I'm ready to put him first place or back first place. I'm going to count to three. Just real quick, lift your hand. Let me say a prayer with you. Uh, real quick, online, you can pop up a little hand emoji. One, two, three. Three. Let me see if that's you tonight. God bless you. 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 Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Anyone else? I'm going to look across the room just one more time. Anybody else? 
Say, Dave, when you pray that prayer, pray for me. I'm ready to put God first place or put him back. God bless you. Thank you. Look at one more time. God bless you. Thank you. Online, just pop up that little hand emoji. We're going to pray for you. Father, I thank you for those that lifted their hand all across the room. God bless you. In every section tonight, Lord, those that are watching online that say, tonight I'm ready to make a decision to put God first place in my life. Lord, you said it's as simple as this. If we'd believe in our heart and say with our mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, we'd be saved. Saved means we'd be safe. Lord, I thank you for those that lifted their hand tonight. I want everyone to say these words with me online. Everyone in the room, everybody say these words. Say, Jesus Christ Christ is is my Lord. You talk about turning the page to a brand new chapter. If you made that decision tonight in just a little bit, they'll give you an opportunity to give you some instructions. Uh, if, this is, if, if, you're, if this isn't your church, I'd encourage you to, to find a, a home church. I'd say this would be a great one. If you lifted your hand, I can't think of anywhere better to grow in that journey of faith. Uh, get in growth track, get in, find out how you can begin to grow. Give us 12 months here at Choose Life. Give us 12 months. Every chance you can, come, get your kids here, get your youth, uh, teenagers. Give us 12 months. If, if your life's not better after 12 months, then we'll understand. But I promise you, at the end of 12 months, you're going to say, man, I'm so glad I, I planted myself at Choose Life. You're not going to believe what God's done in my life and in my family. If you made that decision tonight, I encourage you to do that. Uh, stand on your feet real quick all across the room. And, and if, if you say, Dave, you know, you talk... Uh, Really, I talked about a lot of stuff, but mindset is really what I wanted you to, to get. We got to look at things differently. As a person thinketh, so is he. If that's an area where you've been been battling right now, let me see your hand real quick. That's an area you've been battling in your, in your mindset of what, uh, of just really believing God for, for greater things and, and, uh, and just uh, um, uh, what victorious thinking. I, I, listen, that's the greatest battlefield right is in our mind and 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 listen only you can control your thoughts so don't think the the devil can't control your thoughts he can he can throw darts he can put little ideas but you can cast those down you have the ability to do that because your mindset matters and you have to take uh authority in in your thinking and in your mindset and so i'm just going to pray and and ask god to do that for you tonight i've I've gone uh way over my time so uh i'm 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 sorry but i hope i hope it helped you and uh, let's just lift your hands if you want to receive this father i thank you Lord, I thank you for giving us a mind. And Lord, I thank you for giving us thoughts. And and Lord, I thank you for your word. That as we fill our mind with your word and our thoughts with your word, Lord, that's what we put in is what comes out. And so, Father, I thank you for those that are, that are battling with their mind right now, battling with thoughts right now. Lord, I thank you that we take control, we take authority over those thoughts, those thoughts that aren't of you. Lord, we cast those down. And Lord, we replace those thoughts with your word. Lord, help us to get into your word, to get an understanding of your word. Lord, out in the lobby, there's, there's cards that we can pick up for every kind of subject with scriptures in your word. Lord, that's what we do. We fill our mind with your word and you give us the power to become victors, not victims, conquerors, not complainers. And so, Father, I just thank you that we set our eyes on you tonight. We put our focus on you. We put our thoughts on you. And Lord, we thank you that as we do that, the rest of our life will become the best of our life. We thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, amen.